Hello and welcome to Doc Talk, a Potaholics podcast with Dr. Jenna Burton and myself, James Pikeway. And this show rocks, Dr. Jenna rocks. This week, we talked about social media and how it influences our thoughts about who we are and what we are. We, we had a long conversation about what is a healthy lifestyle. Never a dull moment when you're in the same room as Dr. Jenna. Here's the show. This is Doc Talk. So, I, but I want to jump right back into your 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 broken wrist. So this is not your broken wrist, but no, your my, mother. I think but mine's your, okay. But your, your mother had broken her wrist, and the reason I was thinking about this because I spend an enormous. Uh, my I've got a mother-in-law, who she's eighty, and you know she's had back issues. She had some. She had some uh, a fusion of a couple of her vertebrae, and then she had a hip replacement. And that wrecked the fusion of the vertebrae. She actually had like a plate put in. Oh. And then when they had to do the hip replacement, because it's that's ortho stuff, and it's pretty pretty brutal if you watch that. I mean, <laughs> that's hammer and chisel land. When you said she had a hip replacement, the word that popped into my mind is brutal. I've yeah. seen many, and in fact, once one of my jobs as a house officer was. You, What's they, a house officer? Because it, it's, it's like when you're freshly qualified. Okay. And I was doing an orthopedic rotation, and I had to stand underneath the patient oh holding no. a hammer to push up their <sighs> hip so that they could bang away. And it's yeah. it's actually changed now. It's not quite as brutal okay. as it was, but in old school medicine, yeah. it was really very brutal. <laughs> so I mean, this isn't so long ago, but in in the process of getting the hip replacement, which was good, they because of the force, dislodged the plate. That oh, so it was during the surgery? Yeah, yeah. So wow. this, they were two different... Oh, so that, that ended up happening. So I, I think they managed to fix something or repair something, but the, her problem was the layer in between the vertebrae, the, the goo, yes. has, has kind of gone away. The, the Whatever we call that, the cartilage, the... The disc. The disc, yeah. So they've a couple of those have deteriorated, so she gets lots of pain with her nerves and stuff, and that didn't help. Well, so there's two parts of that, really. So if you think of a postmenopausal woman, you think of fractures. So Mm -hmm. needing hip replacements, often due to fractures, breaking your wrists, breaking your back, um, actually having a slumped posture. It's all to do with osteoporosis. That's when you 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 lose the density to your bones. So what Um, what led into this? Let me me get back up. No, 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 no. I didn't listen to the No, 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 we're going to keep going. I thought that was it. No, no, no. No, no. So... I, I'm like obsessed now with folks, almost geriatric medicine. I keep thinking I should go into medicine. I think, is it too late? You know, 54? No. I could go back into it, don't you think? Absolutely. I don't really have a science background, so I'd have to kind of pick that up. That might be a small challenge, but I, I think I could, do, do we need math as well? I, no, I, not really. Okay, so I might I might have to look for the place where I can do this. Anyway, there, I, I all I do is listen and read these articles about folks who are in their 60s and 70s and 80s and all of these things where you're going and it leads into your mom and then it, we can we can make the full circle back but that they have you know issues with walking and balance and core muscles and all of these things that because of them they might trip and fall where you where we might not normally trip and fall and have some balance issues where we, you and I might not have these balance issues that lead to injuries and so I'm always concerned with my mother-in-law because I watch her walk and she doesn't really walk. She kind of shuffles oh. and I'm going, oh, because because I listen to all these things and these people are describing her and I'm going, this is not good <laughs> because I'm thinking, you know, a little bit of an uneven surface, somewhere wet surface, you slip. It's it's an accident waiting to happen. And then with all the things she's had, I'm just they keep thinking, oh, man. And then that's the kind of leads not into your mom, but similar thing with then getting treatment, making sure it's the right treatment. And, and your mom had a, a fractured wrist. Yeah, I'm terrified to talk. James, have you finished the, yeah, the, yeah, that's the it. intro? That's where we are. <laughs> so it's all these things. So that basically, we've got a whole list of stuff for the show. This but we could huge. Pre- we could yeah. pretty much stay here for the entire time. So, yeah, so basically, uh, I actually did a paper not that long ago on older ladies. It, and it is so where do I find the paper? Where do we find this? <laughs> um, actually, this one was for university. I don't think it's been published yet. So. so is there any reason you haven't copied it into academic e- edu or um, put it up on your blog site? No, I probably should. Yeah, I, I think th- you should. Like, like today? 
good. Okay. All right. Today yeah. it'll be up and you can Okay, read where's it. the blog site? I know that you you said to me we talk too much about this stuff, but I just get a bit embarrassed. No, no, but I I I mean seriously, where this this is for the love of conversation. Yeah. And if you've got great content, which you do, people need to know where they can go to find it. Well, so I have got a website which is just drjennaburton.com okay. and um again it's at Dr. Jenna Burton for uh, Twitter, Instagram and yeah. Facebook. And it's funny because I'm actually a little bit against some parts of social yeah. media yeah. And, and I think this is almost like um, using social media to say it's okay to be normal it's like celebrating the normal person well it's like, it's like what Twitter's doing now right because the anti-vaxxers and vaccinations and I mean we haven't even touched on that we've we got other things to talk about <laughs> but what Twitter's done this week because there's a huge issue with, yes. with vaccinations now in my home country Canada measles outbreaks are, are happening so they've put up they fix their algorithm a little bit so that if you're searching for vaccination stuff you're going to hit the government page first and then the anti-vaxxer stuff comes in much lower but they want people to have a balanced source of information to to read and get a sense of why you might want to have those vaccinations and no one wants to have measles so <laughs> it's like no they don't um and, and honestly public health medicine now is using so much social media to spread yeah. a message so yeah. it's and um, whenever you do a, a public health campaign one of the main sources is influencers yeah. so um paying influencers or encouraging people that are really well educated or seen as the best in the field to talk about uh, what it is that they know regarding vaccinations or, or whatever the, the public health interest is. Um, and also just, just via sending out messages like you yeah. said uh, via yeah. the government website and providing that source of information. Um, but yeah, like one so, of the... But let's, let's head back to back where then. we were. Because where we were is we're talking about, hey, we're all going to get older. Sad. And Well, it's better than the alternative, isn't it? Yeah, so. it's better old than dead. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Rule and, number one, stay alive. And, yeah. and it's funny because my wife was saying, you know, because I, I tend to, you know, do about a 5K every day except today when we're podcasting but i do a 5k and then you know some body weight exercise and my wife's going oh, I said, hey no this is all paying now so that when i'm 80 i can stand up without having huge issues and i can walk with you know my my core muscles have been yes. worked now so that they will be better later this is just lifelong keep active thing because it's a, it takes 40 minutes of my life that's 40 it's, minutes for later on. I mean, you're talking about keeping your muscles uh, in good good shape, yeah. which is important. And it is because it takes off a lot of pressure from the skeletal system. It takes off pressure from cartilages and ligaments. However, what it also does is weight-bearing exercise. And that can be even things like treadmill because you're yeah. pounding weight into uh, your lower limbs, aren't right. you? Even better is actually lifting weights, uh, although okay. you need to do it properly yeah. can help prevent against osteoporosis and mm. sometimes women uh, they talk about osteoporosis and I say women because it does tend to be postmenopausal women but anybody can get it um, and uh, we think about it and we think oh, it's not really a big deal okay so you get a few fractures but people don't realize how uh, good luck at those things healing it's not even just that James honestly it's really quite dangerous so 50% uh, of people that have a hip fracture which is a really common injury after a fall which you say which again becomes more common as you get older yeah. yes and um, 50 percent will actually not survive past 12 months um, what yeah following uh, in look, 2019 those seriously. are the stats so it's not it's in not, the developed world it's not the hip fracture itself so one hip fractures can be dangerous yeah. because they they bleed a lot and we don't really think about bones about bleeding oh yeah that's um in a trauma site um one of the big risks is big limb um, big skeletal bleeding. So ah. if somebody was to break one of the, the large bones in the leg, you'd be very, very concerned about the, the amount of blood that they would lose. Okay. Um, so, so yes, the, the actual fracture itself is dangerous, but more so is you've then got an older population of people that have been out and about then sort of bed bound for a while right so they're not going to be using their lungs properly because they're sitting lying down so you're not you're sort of splinting your lungs and if you don't take in full deep breaths regularly then you're more likely to get pneumonia so you've got they're in yeah. hospital there's hospital acquired pneumonias superbugs um they can lose a lot of muscle there's like uh -huh. quite a lot of muscle wastage whilst they're in recovery um and all these things collectively together put that that type of population um, at a much bigger risk of... That's frightening. Yeah, of mortality. And again, it's just not something you even really think about. It no. wasn't... I, I remember I did a, a post on orthogeriatrics, which was... The See, that's, that's the area I would... I, I, yeah, this is what you would do. I, I, yeah. 
Yeah. But, I mean, I'm honest. I just like the geriatric medicine. I just think. Oh, I know people so, are lovely. So many of these folks, just with little things, could live, you know, even more pleasant lives in their their twilight of, of their lives but we didn't like we didn't have the education then so you're looking at people that when they could have been investing in the health years and years ago were being told smoking is good for you yeah, yeah. the you know although they kept active or a lot of people kept active by walking they didn't know the benefits of weight bearing exercise right. they didn't have access to medications potentially that could have could have yeah. helped them um you know people that had high cholesterol maybe didn't know that they could have been prescribed statins and you know it, yeah. it's, it's totally different to what it is today we don't have an excuse today to yeah. not invest in our health but you can understand how a lot of geriatrics didn't didn't know yeah. really yeah. um but yeah, you you mentioned falls, and that I is mean, all these falls. They just, you know, yeah. for, you know, you've got your hips, you've got wrists, you've got knees, you've got ankles, you've got concussions. How many folks are falling who get a concussion? Yeah. Frightening. And often, as you get older, a lot of people are on blood thinners. So oh, I forgot about those. Yeah. So if you fall and you hit your head and you're on a blood thinner, then that's yeah. that's quite a huge bleed, and that can that can be life threatening. I have seen patients not survive from um, effectively concussions, like you say, when they've had uh, interest cerebral bleeds. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So in fact, I made a joke about it yesterday that in the UK and A and E, all you see is full query cause, full query cause, full query cause. And you just get so many people that will live on their own or um, maybe are in some sort of sheltered accommodation, but people aren't with them day to day, every yeah. hour of the day. They fall and it could be from such a wide variety of things. So yeah. they may have had a mini stroke. They may have had a full blown stroke. They may have had a heart attack. Um, they, they may have slipped on ice that yeah, fell out of the fridge. Exactly. They may, have, <laughs> they may have lost the balance. They're going upstairs. Um, and anyway, they've fallen and often they can't get up. Yeah. So um, then they can have what's called a long lie, which is when they're lying down. Often they get they get cold. They're missing their medications. Again, they have muscle wasted. I've never heard bleeding. that term, a long lie. Yeah. yeah. And again, it's very reflective of their morbidity afterwards. So if the longer the lie, the more dangerous it is. And you you probably know this with talking to um, Andrew from uh, Nexo that... There's now apps uh, you can get on your mobile phone and also yes. on your watch. So this is what I was researching is on the watch, um, it can actually detect when you've fallen and it allows the person that's lying on the floor to say, yes, I have fallen or no, I haven't fallen. And it will notify emergency services and direct them to where the person is lying. See, I like this idea. Yeah. And if you use your Alexa or your Google and it does voice commands, have you oh, fallen? I didn't even can, think see, about that Alexa, would be amazing. Yeah. You know, have you fallen? Yes, I have. Shall we contact, you know, do I contact emergency services? Yes. Yes. Can you repeat that? Yes. Boom. It's done. Well, that's it because that's one of the best ways you can save somebody that has had a fall. Yeah. So people always think of the fractures post fall, yeah. but you don't think about everything else. I never goes. think of all that stuff. I mean, yeah. and, and just the fact that someone could fracture, as you said, their hip and then it's the bleed. I'd never thought about this. Yeah. Like not even in my mind. But um, yeah, not even just that, but it's uh, what also, what caused the fall. So yeah. if they've had a stroke, they need treatment straight away. They don't want to be lying for 24 hours until somebody discovers them. Uh, it, it, and often these people aren't necessarily that tech savvy. Well, I'm wondering also, and, and you must have stats on this. So put the tech savvy aside for a minute. Someone who's fallen or had a stumble and maybe it's stroke related, but they don't want to admit a that they ever fell or b that they even had a stroke because people who have strokes are old or people who have strokes they're going to die or people you know the, then the, everyone when I think of a stroke I don't think of someone our age I think of someone my grandparents' age James and, you need uh, an education <laughs> I know it's but you know more and more I hear of people who have had strokes who are my age and I'm kind of going. Phew. So strokes can happen to anybody. Um, I've sadly seen quite a lot of young men um, have really severe strokes. And why are they having them? What's, uh, what's Normally, if it's a younger male, and I'm talking in general terms because yeah. we say in medicine, common things are common, but it doesn't, yeah. it obviously... We're, we're painting with a very wide brush Yes, here. we are, yeah, because it, it doesn't fit for everybody. Um, usually, young men, if they're going to have a stroke, it's normally through a bleed. Um, I'm actually not sure the exact reason why it is young young okay. males, but often in their 20s, 30s. Really? Yeah, and they can have very severe bleeds too. It's like too. brain bleeds, right? Yeah, mm. and that's considered a stroke because it okay. then starves the other part of the brain of oxygen, um, which is effectively what a stroke is. Yeah. Um, and then as you get older, it tends to be more clots in the okay. brain, uh, which starves, again, yeah. the brain from oxygen. 
Um, but it can happen to anybody. Um, Scary, isn't it? Because yeah. you have no control over this. You do. Um, is it food and exercise? Yeah. And So there's there's two components. So one is genetic. So some people are just prone to it. Some people will have vasculature that is more likely to either bleed or, or clot. Um, some people are genetically prone to clotting. Um, for instance, some somebody that has something called antiphospholipid syndrome would be more likely to clot. What, what is that? Uh, it's, it's just a, it's just a syndrome. That's a that, big word. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. It's a good Scrabble word. You know, I, when um, you must be great at Scrabble. I'm terrible. <laughs> my vocabulary is awful. Unless it's Latin, it's to do with medicine. <laughs> my vocabulary is terrible. My husband's always correcting me. I'm like, well, you you studied English, I didn't. Um, yeah, so that that's just something that prones people to, to clotting. It's a genetic disorder. But on the other hand, you've got lifestyle modifications that you can make. So that is, as you said, there's no there's no magic formula. It's exercise and it's having a decent diet and trying to make yeah. sure that your cholesterol's kept in check. And it's all it's all long term. This stuff I find it's you know a healthy lifestyle is over a period of time. And I'm always, I always find it interesting if I change something, say in my diet, and you know, because you are you read something or you hear something or you just realize, hey, you know, if I eat these carbs, man, I just don't feel so good. And so, but it, I'm always amazed at how long it takes for a dietary change to actually yeah. kick in. So if somebody wants to make a change, at the beginning, they say that you get quite excited and you've got really like enthusiasm. But unless you see results straight away, which often you don't, like you've said. Weeks. Yeah, people get bored and they start to dwindle and they start to go back to old habits. So the best um, modifications that are that tend to, to sort of be put in place and they tend to stay there are the ones that have got much quicker yeah. results because that keeps people going onto the, the modification. And it's hard when you think about things long term because yeah. it is it's short term pain, long term gain. But what is a healthy lifestyle? That's, That's the problem. Everyone... I know. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, I think it's it's not it's not one size fits all. And I think this no. is a real challenge because we're in the we're in the mass market environment yes. where, you know, we, we look at a grocery store, or we look at a, a health food store, or we look at a, a gym and it's like one size fits all, but it's not. And, and it's, something that might be bad for me might be perfectly okay for you. Well, that's it. So you've got, you know, you, you've, you've discuss with the inner fight guys i'm sure at some yeah. point but you know you've got different body types but also marketing is quite misleading so <laughs> there's a lot of like chocolate bars that will be yeah. health bars but really what it's saying is the slightly reduced sugar um, and there's lots of sweeteners in them instead so you do have to be relatively well educated as to what exactly you're looking for and and really it's just about having a moderate lifestyle and yeah. trying to make sure you've got a decent amount of clean foods and that means just non-processed foods yeah. and you're moving and and sometimes i get I a little moderation bit, is the key and yeah. i think so many people forget that it's like you know i love my butter and i love <laughs> i love my french butter in a very particular one like we're we're transiting when we go back home in the summer we transit through paris just to get the butter pretty much i mean we're 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 stopping for the day we're arriving early we're leaving late and that is I mean, there's, there's other things we like to do. We've got our favorite little cafe that we go to every year that they, now they know us when we come in a couple times a year, but, but we stop for butter. May I ask you which butter this is? So it's a butter that has large granules of sea salt in it. Oh, you can get, nice. you can get near that butter here, but not that particular brand. And it's just, it just tastes different. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, you know, if you love that, James, yeah. there's no reason you need to excise that from your but I'm not diet. But I'm not eating a whole thing. I'll just yeah. put a little, a little, you know, a knife piece on a piece of toast or, a, you know, something, and that's about it. Yeah. Maybe a little cooking, but not that much. So it's, it's, when it's, oh, you shouldn't be eating butter. It's like, I'm not eating that much butter. But then there's the other argument that you, you should be eating butter yeah. and that you can have full fat as long as you reduce your carbohydrates. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's it. There's, there's always an argument about these things. Well, you know, my, you know, my side of this is when people say, oh no, you should be eating this. And I said, but my grandparents ate that. My grandmother is 97 years old. That is what she ate. Why are you trying to take away the good stuff from me when it worked for her? But then <laughs> probably your grandma had a lot lower amount of processed foods than oh, we sure. do. That's sure. the thing, you for know. Sure. Like, I've tried to cut processed foods out of my diet. And I think that's a really 
good thing to do because, yeah. um, you know, uh, cancer's going up. Even when I was younger, it was one in three. Now they say one in two. Yeah, um, that's, that's horrible. Yeah, female risk of just things like um, polycystic ovaries is just huge. Yeah. Um, I hear that number's going up. I heard people talking about that the other yeah, day. Yeah, and um, they do link it with a sugar intolerance. So really? it's, it's not diabetes, but it does predetermine you to, you're more likely to get diabetes in the Yeesh. future. Um, and I, I I can't help but think, uh, so I have it yeah. myself, and, and as do many of the population, they think sort of around 50% of the female population. And I oh. am sure that my days of lining up in tuck shop yeah. in school, waiting to buy a massive bag of sweets every single day. Yeah. And my mom didn't think anything of it because that's what we all did. Yeah. And we would buy pure sugar. And yeah. I'm sure that's got to have had an influence. You yeah. know, um, and it's, I think if you can take out processed foods, that's probably one of the best things you can do. And in an ideal world, none of us would eat anything processed. But the reality is that's not the world that we live in these days. So, so it's just about enjoying them as yeah. and when. So this is this leads back to so non-processed foods and how you change things in your diet and how it takes a long time. To, so yes. so I I love sauerkrauty kind of things and that that you know I've never heard of them. You know cabbage. Oh, and, right. Yeah, okay. Like sauerkraut. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a, a posh so, word for them. Yeah. So, so you know, I, but I, when I started looking at when you buy this stuff in the store and it, it's kind of like, okay, well, all of the good sides of it has been taken out through sterilization and the packaging and, and I'm reading the label and I'm going, hold on a second. There's like words on this label that I have no idea what it is. So then I, I sort of did a little research and realized, you know, I can make my own fermented vegetables, right. which have a really decent impact on gut health because of bacteria and enzymes and, and blah, blah, blah. And they're really easy to make. Like, I mean, really easy to do this, just time. And, and, and yeah, people have got busy lives. And I mean, you don't really do anything because it just sits there and does it on its own. So I started doing this and, and I'm like a fanatic now because I just love this fermented cabbage or zucchinis and carrots and you know and i mix all sorts of wacky things in when i eat it that people kind of go what are you doing what is that <laughs> that you're eating like really and and so at first once i started doing this people say well what's the benefit and i said well you know this it's it's a fermentation that happens so there are there's all sorts of bacteria that's in there bacteria is good for your stomach it's it's and and your, the bacteria then is helping, as you know, as the literature would say, helping to create an environment for your own yes. bacteria to do its job. But it, it took probably four months of, and I'd probably you know three four times a week I'll have just a little container that that you know at lunch as a side dish. But probably about four months before I actually started to be able to physically say, this is what I notice has physiologically happened. Because, and the only thing that's changed really in the diet is that. I was going to say, that's a difficult thing though, isn't it, James? Is, is putting yeah. down to, is that definitely yeah. what's caused the change within me? And yeah. people get a bit confused as to whether it is or not. And I, because I think it is. And it's, it, you know, and you start noticing all sorts of little things. But I just thought, what, the, what came back to me was that, okay, this doesn't really cost me much to do. I mean, I can go and buy probiotic capsules. But this is kind of fun because I'm making it, I'm doing it. There's no additives, there's no preservatives, there's no nothing. This is just happening as it happens. And you've got all the other health benefits as well yeah. of eating something like that. You know, if you just pop a pill, it's never quite the same. Yeah. In fact, there was a famous quote, I can't remember who it was by, but it was basically saying, if you can do something naturally, it's always going to have so many more benefits than something you can take in a tablet. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you are doing that and plus it's cabbage or whatever, yeah, you know, it's, that's all sorts of these, you know, vegetables that just, but a lot of cabbage, but you know, it's just, it just works. And then someone said, oh, you, you know, the first thing people hear cabbage, they go, oh, you must be really gassy. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going, actually, no, I don't understand. And, and they said, really? And then, cause you know, when you, you figure if you just eat some raw cabbage or you, you know, cabbage rolls and I said, you know, surprisingly not. So if people are really gassy, uh, it can be because they've overdosed on vegetables, but often it's also because of, of another issue, uh -oh. another gut issue. So, um, for instance, my mum like lives on, um, I've told you before, she absolutely lives on carbohydrates. So and I said, it's a piece of toast, a bowl of cornflakes, um, a donut, um, back to a piece of toast, maybe with an egg on top. You know, she doesn't yeah. really tend to consume it. 
And yet she complains that vegetables upset her stomach. And I'm saying, mom, it's not <laughs> the vegetables. It's not, it's everything else that you're having. Yeah. And if you do go more, go back more to uh, like a real, a, a, a very plant-based diet, it's so good for your, yeah. your gut. And in fact, a while ago, I went through a phase where I ate nothing other than sort of eggs, vegetables, salad. I was getting ready for a wedding. So I was okay. trying to drop some weight. Did it work? It did, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, it did. Yeah. And I have to say, it, it wasn't just that, but I felt amazing. Yeah. And I felt like really clean inside too. Um, and again, it took some time to notice the benefits, but I felt so good. The yeah. problem is it's such a limited diet. It's very, very, very hard yeah. to stick to long term, which is why you have to have the moderations included. Well, that's it. I mean, yeah. speaking of moderation, I, I ran into someone the other day in an office who I hadn't seen in a long time. And they'd done one of those by diet in a cooler bag that comes oh, to your yeah, office. Like, yes. I don't even know which, I mean, I think I know which one they were using. I want to mention the name because um, I just don't want to mention the name. But, but what what happened is I remember them doing that diet and they got so thin. They were, yeah. I mean, they looked awesome. Saw them, you know, a week ago. It's probably been a couple of years. I was like, holy mackerel, there's two of you. What what happened? Does this person, will they know who it is that you're talking about if they listen to this? Probably. <laughs> but there's there's now two of them. I yeah. mean, I, I, I just went, oh, what happened? And I, it's, I think it's that moderation thing. They got off that diet and maybe because the cooler bag things, there is a fee. Maybe they reached their point where they said, hey, I'm at my goal weight. I'm at my goal look. And then they went back into their normal routine and moderation was not part of that. Well, that's why we need to celebrate the normal. And when I yeah. say normal people, I don't mean like normal, just normality, like being not the best, not yeah. the the one that sticks out, just just being like the average human yeah. who does a bit of this and a bit of that and can do things that are sustainable. Because exactly. that's the thing is we don't have a particularly sustainable life. And if you look on Instagram, social media, oh. it's all the people that are outside the bell <laughs> yeah. curve, aren't they? Yeah. Um, and that's what we compare ourselves with daily. And there's a great book, I don't know if you've ever read it, called Homo Sapiens. No. Or, in fact, it might just be called Sapiens. It's a, it's a brilliant book um, and it's all about sort of evolution and it's saying okay. that the common man compares himself against his peers because they're yeah. trying to find where they fit in the community. And because of social media now and we're always comparing ourselves with the best of, yeah. of everything yeah. because that's how they get people to follow them. Um, it's actually causing us to feel worse and worse yeah. about ourselves, which makes makes a lot oh, yeah, of sense. Makes a lot of sense. He talks about yeah. it in a much more scientific process, <laughs> but, but, but that's the gist anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. Uh, mm. So, what you you often mention your running? Are you trying to like run for something in particular no. at the moment, James? No, no I, I, it's it, you know it. So I I did that marathon. And when did you do a marathon? I did a marathon uh, I, I, two years ago. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I did the Dubai Standard Chartered. How did it go? I did four minutes thirty. Four, four minutes. Hours, That's four amazing. Hour, four <laughs> hours. Four hours thirty seven minutes. Oh wow! Yeah, it was it was. Uh, it was one of those things that when I finished, I said, never again. And then I thought, you know what? I want to do one more and I wanted to go faster. And I started training and I started working and I got to the point where I had to up my mileage. And I, I was, you know, I was, I was probably doing about 20, 18 to 20 kilometers a day at that point. And, you know, just little things, calves started to feel. And, yeah. and I realized I was running one day and I was running pretty good paces and I was feeling good about it. And then as the calf things were starting again, because it's just, it's a lot of kilometers you got to put in. I, I said, you know what? This is not worth it. I said, no. this is. And so I, I literally went home and said to my wife, I'm not doing it. She goes, what do you mean you're not doing it? You, you, all you've been talking about is doing this. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. I said, I, I'm not, not going to quit running. But these, these distances, I've reached a threshold where it's just not worth it. So I, I run about five kilometers a day. And I just run it. It's funny because at first it was like, oh, I've given up. And, you know, you kind of go through a little bit of that thing. And then I realized I just like running, you know. Yeah. And, and, and you want to be able to stay running, whereas if yeah. you carried on with those long distances, something might have it's gone. Like, and oh, my, Well, it, it's funny because I went to my osteo after and he was just laughing in, in a good way. But he's just going, you wrecked yourself. And it took it almost took me six months to fully recover from that run and little things like hips. And yeah. they were just always they were always tight and I'd go in and they'd loosen them up and I'd do stuff and I'd stretch and I was doing yoga and it was just to everything would loosen up and then it would all get really tight again. Yeah. And I just went, you know, it's not worth it. It's so funny because this is basically exactly the same thing that happened to me. So oh. in university, I was a massive runner. I used to get up crack of dawn every day, go for a really long run. And just for fun of a weekend, I would just go out on my own, do like half a marathon and I didn't really think anything of it. And I loved running. Like it was, in fact, I still do. I absolutely yeah. love it. I wish I could do more. 
said on my way, I went to do the New York Marathon, and on my way there, I told my parents who sort of were coming with me, I said, look, do not let me sign up for another one. I, I really don't want to do another marathon again. The minute I finished, I signed up for another marathon. And then that's it. I just started to get injuries. And I thought yeah. I'd rather be able to still run than not run at all. There you go. Um, but that's the thing is you need to, it's not all about trying to be the, the fastest or the best. Again, it's about taking that time back to yeah. also uh, unwind. Well, just, I find it's therapy now. So I go yes. and it's, and it's, it's kind of like a, you know, when people get their coffee and they sit down and read the newspaper in the morning. Yes. So I'll, I either run, but recently I've been just been doing it on a treadmill and then I just listen to podcasts. So it's actually two for the twice of one, but I'll, I'll get on the treadmill and I'll do a, a 5k at about, you know, 545 pace, 530 pace. And it just feels so good. And I'm done. Then I do a, you know about a 20 minutes of, of, of body weight exercises, and and then I go to work, and I just feel so. <sighs> but that's it. And um, I feel like exercise is such an underutilized yeah. um, form of therapy for yeah. people because it, I mean, it releases so many endorphins. It releases all your feel good hormones. Yeah. Plus, it causes you to really open up your airways, open your lungs. There's, there's not really, a, apart from making sure that you try and avoid injuries, and especially yeah. if you're going to incorporate weights into things, it's always good to have somebody that is showing you the ropes, teaching yep. you how to do it properly. There isn't really a downside to exercise. Yeah. The only thing is, is just try and don't feel like, I've never exercised and now I'm going to start going six, seven days a week. Exactly. Do, you know, take it slowly, get your body used to it. The first session should be more just about movement and getting your body used to moving again. Yeah. Uh, and just take it slow. There's no rush. Um, you know, it's not about sort of trying to drop five dress sizes in a week. It's about just trying to get yourself healthier. And yeah. as you said, invest for the future. So you're not one of these people that's having lots of falls. Yeah. So what a perfect segue. You are a master of this, Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, yeah. we started <laughs> off talking about geriatric kind of things and broken wrist that from a fall that, you know, we've got all sorts of things that come Oh, that in. was my mom. Yeah. yeah she broke. So, so it comes in, you know, you've got treatments, you've got way things are dealt with. We've got our healthcare systems that are changing and maybe not necessarily for the better walk us through the experience that your mom had with with her wrist because it's ongoing yeah so um my mom fell over a little while back it was i have to say <laughs> i love my mom so much she's the best thing in the world but it was a, a really inconvenient time for me <laughs> so she was coming to dubai with me and um, my husband was already here and so she was about she was coming on the plane to help me because my yeah. boys were tiny they were like really young so she said jenna i'm not gonna let you do that flight on your own and to be honest i, I couldn't have at that stage she said i'm gonna come with you and I'll make a holiday out of it and I was like oh thank god yeah my mum's gonna be here to help and she was my chief babysitter when I'd go to the gym and stuff and then the next minute she she fell she said Jenna I've, I've fallen I think I've broken my wrist because it's pointing in a different direction how, how did she fall what was it just she was sitting she fell down a step oh no just just kind of missed a step or yeah um you know we were talking about how things develop as you get older and yeah. one of the things that my, my mum has is, is problems with her spine okay. um, and she also has uh, she's actually registered as disabled although she, you would not know it if you uh -huh. saw her she wouldn't mind me discussing this right, with okay. James um, <laughs> I was just you, you saw it on my face is your mum okay with this she's yeah. fine okay. yeah, she's, I think yeah. she's quite proud of it because okay. um, she's done really well considering oh, nice. And um, anyway, sometimes like, you know, you can stumble a little bit. She's had lots of, she's had over 16 foot surgeries on her feet. No way. That's yeah. a lot of surgery. Yeah, it is. And that's not including the, the problems with the spinal cord, etc. And uh, anyway, she stumbled on a step. And, and what the typical thing is that you, you stretch your arms out. Yeah. And the most common fracture, again, in postmenopausal women, is something called a collie's fracture. Um, and it's just sort of, it, it kind of uh, fractures just very near the joint line. And hers was quite a decent fracture. And I said, Mom, I think you're going to have to have, it's called an ORIF, an open reduction internal fixation on that, oh, which man. is where they basically put a plate in. Okay. Anyway, um, they decided at the time that she would probably be okay. So she carried on, um, had her plaster taken off and her wrist was still swelling and she uh. couldn't really move it. It's quite funny when you see her because she can't, she can't move her hand back backwards. And if somebody drops coins into her hand, she can't turn her arm around to catch the oh, coins. Wow, okay. Um, anyway, it meant she was totally written off and she felt more guilty about the fact that she couldn't help me and getting on the plane with two young children and my mum who couldn't do anything was it was horrendous and I was saying mum I'm really sorry but I'm selfishly really upset <laughs> um but yeah poor mum this is months and months ago it's about a year yeah, ago yeah. Um, so where she so at this point I mean that's 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 kind of 
did you know we're not assigning blame here we're not pointing fingers but did they err in the side of of optimism when they thought that your mother didn't need to have surgery surgery right away the thing is is that it's quite different back in the nhs because it's a public Mm. health care system to here so you you tend to decide if you can let the body heal on its own it's always going to be better right um and you want to do as much with as little as possible that's partially from a financial point of view sure um, of course you know you have to consider that but it's also because that is actually what's better for the patient mm. however there will be people that slip through the net where you right. try and do that and you watch and wait and it doesn't work well it's it's just the numbers too that that the public health systems in canada in in the uk have to deal with it's phenomenal how many yeah. people will go through a doctor's office or a clinic's office extraordinary numbers i mean it's sad because now um it's sort of with regards to my mum she's still she's now having to have surgery on her wrist and she potentially might have to have a wrist replacement and i didn't, uh, I didn't even know there was a such thing as a wrist yeah, replacement yeah i mean you can replace pretty much any joint in your body right. yeah I didn't, is that a really common one wrist um no not yeah. really a lot of people might get it through arthritis say okay. but it's, it's normally a fracture what's the recovery rate for something like that um it should be to be honest i don't know statistics but i'm sure it'd be pretty high yeah. um because if you like full motion it, back from a like, well, yeah, I mean wow. like, replacements are really good these days. Okay. I mean, exceptional if you think about how many people get a knee replacement, a hip replacement. Yeah, this this is the era to get those things done. Like yes. they've they've really practiced well. The only thing that's different with your wrist is just because obviously you can move it in quite yeah. you know a number of different directions. In theory, it's just um, up and down, but really you know you can also twist it as well, can't you? Um, so no, no, she should have a really good recovery from that if that's the line she goes down. Um, however, she will moan and say people have, uh, and as we all do, like, oh gosh, you know, the doctor missed it and everyone's so quick to place yeah. the blame. But you have to see what did the doctor see in that setting. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm always really protective of doctors. Oh, and, and I think ex- exactly so. I and mean, they're looking at it. I mean, you're a doctor. You're looking at the the images. You're looking at the patient. You're looking at what's gone on in the past. You're looking at the case studies. Say, hey, this, could, this, this looks like a, a textbook case of let's put a plaster on it. It's going to heal itself, and then we yeah. don't have to be more invasive. You get a snapshot of somebody in that instant, yeah. and all you can do is make a decision on everything that you have. Yeah. And you have got a limited time, you've got limited resource, and you're making the best decision you feel for that patient then. But, you know, it's not 100% always going to be the right decision. Yeah. Um, and everyone's so quick to place the blame. I mean, we I lost, um, I had a family friend um, who I've grown up with, and we lost her just recently. And the first thing everybody says is, well, whose fault was it? It's like, well, yeah, as long as maybe, fault all the time. Yeah, yeah, maybe it wasn't somebody's fault. Maybe it was the fact that, you know, she was a heavy smoker and it was, you know, her lungs just couldn't cope anymore, which yeah. is how I've seen it. Um, but everyone is very, very quick. And it's and it's sad. It makes me really sad because I think I'm like the biggest advocate for the National Health Service. Yeah. Um, and, and just for doctors generally. Like what a hard do. one to be a doctor, knowing that people are going to be pointing their fingers at you if there's any off the norm yeah. issue with a treatment, you react to the gloves, you react to an antibiotic, you react to something that's been implanted in your wrist, they're going to be pointing the finger, why didn't you know this? It's your fault. Well, that's <laughs> I spent ages, so I'm, I'm terrible at timekeeping. If anyone's come to my clinic, they'll know because they'll be waiting a while. And I, I spend a lot of time educating people. So it's not just about, right, this is the treatment you need. It's about, this is the treatment you need right now. However, I can't guarantee that tomorrow things haven't changed. Mm. So if that's the case, you need to come back and see me. You know, um, so if you choose not to give somebody antibiotics, they might have a viral infection, but tomorrow they might also have a secondary bacterial Uh, infection on top and therefore they need to come back and see me. But that doesn't mean that I was wrong in not giving you antibiotics the day before. Sure. Does does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I do spend a long time trying to talk to people and educate them. And I think if people are aware, they understand more. You know, if you understand, you're more accepting. Whereas if people feel like it's been done to them, and they've not understood the process or what can happen, what can't happen. Um, they're a, quick, a lot more quick to point the finger. Yeah, so, go. yeah, mm. that's that's the way I try and do it. And I, I will always jump to the defense of a doctor, always. There we go. So where's your mum at now? Um, so she's back in the UK. She's about to have surgery. I think it's on like the 26th of May. 
Um, and that's where they're going to put in the a plate at this point? Yes. Um, they No, they're not actually. Oh, they're no. going to shave some of the bone. Oh, yeah. bone. How's that, now, how's that going to help? Um, because she can't bend it backwards. And so they're going to cut some of that bone away so that she can move it a bit more. Absolutely. But um, this is then, again, when she becomes more at risk of falls because yeah. you've got someone living on their own, steep stairs, yeah. not able to put their arm out if they did fall. So, you know, it's quite a complicated yeah. Getting old is it's yeah. complicated. Yeah. You like geriatric medicine, but you'll be busy, James, there when you go. take you, it well, up. you got to go visit them. And that's when I think the, the home visits become important so you can actually see the environment and start thinking, how are we going to make this work? So maybe I don't want to actually be the doctor. I want to be a... You want to be the occupational therapist. That's what I want to be. Yeah. Maybe, that's what, maybe that's more suited to me. So uh, if somebody has a fall and you don't really know what's caused it you cannot go you can't leave the hospital without having a physiotherapist and an occupational um, health therapist assess Mm. you and check that you're okay to go home because often what will happen is rather than go back to their current environment it's deemed that they are no longer safe to live in that environment and we are talking about more geriatric type medicine now Um, and therefore you have to put modifications in to their home which is why um, a lot of people tend to fall if they've gone on holiday or they're in a different environment to normal um, so even it can be things like help up the stairs, helping getting out of the bath, yeah. helping off the toilet, you know, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. just just really basic things. Because as you get older, um, we were given once um, a pair of rubber gloves to wear, some cloudy goggles. Um, i trying to think what else we were given. We were given a load of things to numb all our senses, some gloves over our ears. And we were told that now imagine having to live your life day to day with the numbing of your senses like you're experiencing with all these things and that is what you have to go through as you get older so of course you're more likely to fall because you can't see things as well you can't hear things as well um and you're you know you can't move as well either and and the environments are being constructed and put together by people like you and me who have pretty we're, we're okay we're not thinking of the folks who are who are you know 20 years older than us and how they're going to deal with all these things. So my grandma is a bit of a legend and she's 92 years of age and she's only just started taking a tablet now. So wow. so at the beginning, when she first turned 92, she didn't take one tablet a day and I, I just think she's awesome. I think I've told you this before, actually. Um, she's my hero and um, she... Her favorite place in the world is to go to Marks and Spencers yeah. because <laughs> Marks and Spencers, I kid you not, has got really even flooring so whereas for you and I, we went out on the street and we had to go up and down like little steps or the it was slightly cobbled. She she can't she can't cope with it. It makes her a tumble. Whereas Marks and Spencers has always got perfectly straight flooring, so she can just whiz yeah. around. I know we're talking about that. I, you just maybe remind me of my own grandmother, and this is a Mother's Day picture of my grandmother. She looks great. Yeah, ninety seven. She's not ninety seven. Londoner. She's uh, my grandmother's from London, London, England. Oh, really? Yeah, She's yeah. living in Canada now. She has. She was a war bride. She moved to Canada after World War Two. She looks a lot younger than ninety seven. Yeah, that's amazing. So, what does she say? What's her secret? Uh, you know, she she exercises. Does she? Yeah, yeah. She's, but you know, she's got some vision problems and this and that. But she's 97. She's doing okay. She still gets out. So my grandma had a fall a little while back and she couldn't get up off the floor. Oh no. So after she, you know, managed to eventually contact somebody, I can't remember how she managed to get up, but she did. Yeah. She was absolutely fine. And um, she was, uh, I was talking to her not long after and I said, you're right, grandma, you know, is it knocked you off your feet a bit? She'd know it's okay, and she'd been lying on the floor and practicing getting up. Oh, there you go. Yeah, smart, so, you see? Yeah, very yeah. smart. Yeah. Um, so that if she ever did fall again, she was able to get up. Um, and people were saying it was a bit dramatic, and I was like, absolutely yeah. not. That is really sensible. Yeah, yeah. Completely sensible. Well, and, and that's that whole area. So, you know, your mum's going in to get this this bone shave, and hopefully that works. Sorts it, yeah. Let's hope, let's hope. Because otherwise, it's another surgery, and it's oh, more surgeries. And now, and I need her to come out and visit me. Yeah, like she's, yeah she uh, needs to be here. Yeah, of course. She likes, she loves Dubai. Yeah. Um, and and it's never nice being away. You know, yeah. it's it's hard to be away from someone when they're having an operation. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, I was desperately trying to get home for the op so I could just be there, just so I could make her a cup of tea the next day. Yeah. Um, and anyway, I like the flights just aren't working out. It's yeah. not just me; it's me and two boys. Yeah. It's you know, it's yeah. three seats. It starts to become expensive, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, it's, it's hard to be away when family aren't well. I know, I'm sure you've experienced it. Everybody has out here. Well, this is coming back to your grandmother and practicing getting up from the floor, practicing just getting up from a chair. 
practicing, you know, getting up and standing on something, practicing going upstairs. I think these are, and someone said to me, well, practice, I said, well, those, those activities become an exercise. Yes. And the exercise, they're, they're helping to work on some of those muscles a little bit, but they're just, you know, they're, they're doing it. So they know what to do and they are, they're able, it's functional exercise. Exercise doesn't have to be in the gym. No, it, it I think the functional doesn't. things, just yes. getting up off a chair. I mean, I, I watch people as they get older and how they can't get up. You, you start watching, how do they sit on the chairs? What are they using their arms for? We, you just, and, and so many people you'll see in their 70s and, and 80s who have to kind of really brace on things to kind of lift because they've got no core muscles or they're, they're very much weakened. And I'm going, Man, that's a big problem. How are they going to get up if they go to a movie theater? How are they going to get out of the chair? Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, even... Uh because you can lose your eyesight as well yeah. when you're in the dark in the movie well, theater, yeah. especially if you've got a little bit of glaucoma. Um, but people often think about the big muscles. What about the little tiny muscles yeah. like in your like feet exactly. and your hands? And your hands, yeah. So picking up buttons, picking up pennies, you yeah. know, you don't, you, people don't think to, to use those, but you can, you can, yeah. you can practice, you can practice doing things, you can get aids to try and help build the, the, the muscles in, in, in your hand. You can uh, sort of grip your, yeah. your toes onto the ground, help build the muscles in your idea. feet. It's, but pe- you don't think about the small no. ones, do you? So I kind of think that that's, you know, leading back to the very start where we've been talking about, that's the kind of area I'd love to go into, you know, people's homes or meet them at the rec center and just work on these functional activity slash exercises so that a they can be prepared so that they probably won't have a fall or they won't have a stumble so they can be thinking about what they're doing because i just think when we got vanity that's kicking in here where people don't want to admit that they need to do it or that they need these things and i mean i was there i mean i got bifocal glasses and i remember i mean i probably had bifocals for 10 years and i remember i was sitting at with a friend and i was looking at something and i couldn't read it and he goes he looks at me and goes dude i hate to say this you need bifocals. I go, no, I don't. He goes, you can't read what's on the piece of paper. He says, it's, quit the vanity. It's bad. He says, I've had bifocals for two years. Get, you know, get progressives, get whatever, but you need reading glasses. But the thing is, at least with bifocals, you can't see it. Whereas yeah. a lot of people, so for instance, my grandma now should really have at least a walking aid. Yeah. And if not, even a wheelchair, yeah. but will not use them. You see where um, I'm looking at these things and I'm saying, when I get to the point where I need a walker, I'm going to have a walker. Yeah. Like, there's no question in my mind. I'm thinking this will be absolutely. Be, and, and, and as we're saying, your grandmother, my grandmother, oh no, my grandmother uses a walker. She actually does her exercises with her but walker, one arm up, one arm down. She has no issues with the walker. She she re- just realizes, you know what? It works. Yeah, you see, we've bought my grandma uh, walking sticks, aids, etc., and she just yeah. will not. Use. In fact, <laughs> one Christmas, I bought her a whole ton of aids around the house. She's like, really? Jenna, I feel like you're trying to tell me that I'm getting old. And, I was thinking, well, and that's it, right? Dudes. That's yeah. it. Doing button exercises, doing get up from chair exercises, getting a walker, and oh, I'm getting old. Well, you are old. <laughs> but but it's difficult because because you don't yeah. you don't feel any different. That's what she said yeah. to me once. Um, my my grandma once gave me a book to read, just like a novel. And anyway, it was really saucy inside. <laughs> and I said, Grandma, that book was really rude that you gave me. And she said, Well, Jenna, I, I am old enough to read it, you know. <laughs> and. And I thought, you know, fair enough. And what and her point was is that just because my body has got older, yeah. it doesn't mean I feel any different. Yeah. And and sometimes we often think of, I mean, a whole different topic altogether, but sometimes we think that dementia is a really sad thing. Yeah. And other times I think in some ways it's quite nice because it's terrible for family. It's terrible for those around you. But how awful to have a completely astute mind and watch your body effectively yeah. giving in on you. I don't know which is, is the better of the two. Yeah. I've seen lots of people with dementia and they mm. often are very happy people and they're, yeah. they're not necessarily aware of what's happening to them. To them yeah, whereas that's, that's a real tough one, isn't it? Yeah, like your, your grandma's 97 and she must... Did you say 97 or 8? Yeah, 97. Seven. You know, they're not soft. They know what's yeah. happening to them and it must be hard to yeah, accept I, that. I have an aunt who uh, is probably... Sorry, probably 85 years old with with dementia and you know we look at it as kind of sad yeah. um, you know her life is her life and it's it, it gets just because it's the, the the person the physical person i remember and now the person that we deal with is a little bit different yes and it also depends because there's different types of dementia yeah. um, vascular dementia you're fully aware of what's happening to you and therefore it's very distressing Ooh. um that's less common than alzheimer's where you don't tend to you, you can have insight now and again as to what's happening but normally you're not yeah. quite as aware 
Um, and also within that, um, there are other types of dementia, but they're less common. Within that, you've also got um, those that are troubled. Oh. So you can get like a very tormented type um, ah, dementia. Okay. And that is horrific. I mean, I've seen that and that's really, oh, it's really. terrible to watch. And people can be frightened. They can see things coming through the walls. Oh, really? Really nasty. Or you can get pleasantly confused. Now, when I'm older, if I if I make it to old age, I've got no problems of being pleasantly confused. Like, it looks <laughs> like a really good. nice world. <laughs> Um, and in fact, we went to, um, we, we were doing old age psychiatry. I did years ago and I loved it. I absolutely loved old age psychiatry. And um, we saw some little old ladies just like singing, um, uh, they were singing like musical songs to themselves, um, totally unaware of what was going on. <laughs> and my friend Sultana, she was my clinical partner. She said, Jenna, that's going to be you in the future. I was like, I hope so. <laughs> She's having a whale of a time. <laughs> so, you know, it can be a blessing and a curse. Yeah, yeah. Man. We got so much to talk about, but uh, I think, uh, why don't we leave it there for now? And cool. we'll pick up and do it all again really soon. Dr. Jenna Burton, tell us how we find your blog again, because you're, what are you posting up? You're posting up. Oh, you've told me I've got to post up about my, um, my the, fall. Um, yeah. the no, the paper app, you wrote, you wrote this paper. Yeah. Applications um, mm, yeah. for people that have fallen. Yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I've been told I've got to post it today and I will. Yeah, that'd be a good, that'd be a good post. So drjennaburton.com. Yeah, that's it. And you'll link it through on your Instagram and all that kind of stuff. I will indeed, James. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying that's, that I felt I'm a bit... I'm you em- homework. This I know, I know. I was saying that you I don't felt have embarrassed to do. plugging, so um, yeah, you've no, done it no, for no, me. No, Thank I, you. No, I think it's important, and I think, you know, we got content out there, as we said... People are listening. People are giving a look. It'll be, it'll be fantastic. Dr. Jenna Burton, thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to Doc Talk, a Podaholics podcast with Dr. Jenna Burton and myself, James Pikeaway. You want to find out more about what we're doing? Check us out on the socials. That's Podaholics with a K. Or drop us an email, Podaholics with a K at gmail.com. Share the link. Tell people about us. And we'll talk to you again really soon. So long for now. <laughs>